Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams and I am going to try and translate numbers into words, basically taking data, raw data, putting it into a frequency distribution, creating some graphs, and then helping you all interpret those graphs. So let's see what we've got. All right, what we did was we took a sample of 133 hospitals to determine how many employees they had and what we ended up was with a pretty big range anywhere from 102 to 789 put that data into either Excel or mini tab sorted it and then created a frequency distribution all right so this is what we ended up with when we did the frequency distribution the way that I created this was, seeing my previous video, was we took the range, the highest data point, figured out how far it was from the lowest data point to determine the range of the distribution, took the range of the distribution, divided it by the number of classes, because I had 133, what we ended up with was that I, wait a minute, hang on, what I ended up with was a, um, with 2 to the K, ended up with 8 classes, and that gave me a width of about 108, but what we know is that we wanted to come up with a width that was rounded up, so we rounded up to 109 for our class width. From there, we created our lower data, lowest class limit, beginning with our smallest data point. Went up 109, so we knew that this first class was from 102 up to, but not including, 211, and kept going that way because remember it's 211 up to but not including 320, 320 up to, but not including 429. Man, my arrows are bizarre today, right? So the other thing that it gave us, so what I knew was that with a width of 109 and these limits we then went to our data and we simply created this frequency distribution which said that there were 21 data points that fell between here and here 19 that were between 211 up to but not including 320 and on down until we accounted for all 100 and 33. Remember that this percentage frequency distribution represents the percentage that this class represents of the whole. And so what we knew was we got 15.8 by taking 100 and, whoops, taking 21 rather, dividing it by 133 gave us 15.8%. From there, we did both cumulative frequency and cumulative percentage. Remember, cumulative frequency is simply this class plus this class, and then these two plus this one gives me this one, and so on. Same thing with the cumulative percentage. We simply rolled down, collected our, cum our percentages as we rolled down the distribution until we got to a hundred percent. So um, you all can look at my other video for that, but that's just a brief overview. The big key with this is how do you create charts based on this frequency distribution, percentage frequency distribution, cumulative frequency, and percent frequency. Well the first thing I did was I did a histogram. All right. Remember, a histogram is simply a specialized type of bar chart, and what it charts is 
frequency. All right. So what I knew was for each class that the frequency on this y-axis here is between 0 falling in the class and 30. So what I knew was in that first class, that first class from 102 up to, but not including 211, there were this many. In the second class, from 102 up to, but not including 211, there would be this many. So the secret to reading a histogram is to know that one bar equals one class. All right? Now reading these, you just have to kind of, if you don't have the distribution, you just kind of approximate. Right? So I'm going to say that's probably, I don't know, maybe 19. The other secret is, is that when you look at this, if I wanted to say how many hospitals had fewer than 429 people, so how many hospitals had fewer than 429, that's horrible writing, I know that this class goes up to 211, this class goes up to 320, this class goes up to 429. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bar plus this bar plus this bar, and I'm going to add all of those together. If I'm wanting to know how many had more than 865, I'd be looking up this way, and it would be this many. If I wanted to know what percentage have between, then I would take this bar and this bar. And remember, on reading a histogram, if you don't have real exact markings over here, we kind of approximate, right? If that makes any kind of sense at all. So a histogram is kind of the most basic, the most straightforward. Um, the most important thing to remember about a histogram is that each bar equals one class. And what your markers on the bottom are, are they're going to actually be the class limits. So I know that this bar right here represents from 211 up to, but not including 320. This bar is from 320 up to, but not including 429. 429 up to, but not including 538, etc., etc. So um, let's look at a different kind of chart and graph that we could have created from this distribution. All right, this is an ogive, and what an ogive chart is cumulative percentage. Right, so cumulative percentage. So what's represented on that ogive is this column of the distribution right here. Cumulative percentage. So that one right there is what you would create your ogive with. Right? So let's go look at the chart again. All right, so remember now we knew that this was a ogive that was a cumulative percentage, and that's why an ogive always rises, because what we know is that on this axis, this x-axis right here, is the number of employees, and on this axis is the percentage. Again, what you'll see is down here, see where these tick marks are? There's your class, 102 to 211, 211 to 320. So if I want to know what percentage of, of hospitals had fewer than 320 employees, it's going to be all of these people back here. So if I want to read this, then what I know is that 
less than 320 is going to be right there. So I figured that that's 2530, 3540, 4550. So I'm going to say about 30%. Remember, if you don't have real exact axes over here, you're still kind of plus or minus a little bit. So I know that I've got 30% of them have fewer than 320 because what I know is that this is 102 up to but not including 320 to 11 up to but not including 320 320 up to but not including 429 429 up to but not including 538 etc etc so if you had your distrib your cumulative frequency distribution what you would be able to do is actually label each little pie slice of this from your cumulative percentage distribution. And what you would know is by the time you got over here, you'd have 100%. Oops, my little guy's like being weird right now. I think I'm off the screen. All right, let me show you what I mean. All right, remember this number for me, right? 15.8% should be in that first class. Cumulative percentage, 30.1% are less than 320, all right? So write that number down, 30.1%. Let's go back over and see the OGI or OGI. All right, here we are back at our friend, Mr. Ojai. Remember, I said for you to remember the number 30.1% because we said that 30.1% in that cumulative frequency distribution, 30.1% of the hospitals had less than um, 320 people, right? Less than 320 people. All right, there's 320. We want less than, so we want all this area. Remember I said that we were going to scooch over here, right? So that's 30%, 35, 40, 45, 50, all right? So can you see where less than 320, right there at the 30% mark? And so what this cumulative percentage or this OJIVE shows me is graphically that fewer than 320 employees were found in approximately 30.1% of the hospitals surveyed. So hopefully that makes the OJIVE make more sense. All right, let's go look at a frequency polygon. So what does a frequency polygon show us? Well, take a look at your take a look at your label for your x-axis, right? Again, are you getting the pattern class limits, right? Class limits, except here I have percentage, not cumulative percentage. So what I know is that I've got 15, I'm right there, 15.8% are in that first class. Look what happens here. I've got another between that 211 and 320. I'm going to look, go back and see what percentage is in that class. Right, hang on. Look what we've got. Um, remember that 15.8 percent? Have you seen that before in just the percentage? Right, just the percent column? Well, I bet if I go back over here, look, amazingly, right? You see that 15.8 percent right there? That rep represents the amount that exists in that first class. 15.8% because all we did here 
was we just graphed the percentage, not the cumulative percentage. So when we look at creating these charts, what I know is that when I go to read them, that the straight frequency, right, just the straight frequency is going to be represented in the histogram based on the class limits. The cumulative frequency is going to be represented in um, another graph, right? The cumulative percentage is going to be represented in that frequency, um, in that ogive, and my straight percentage is going to be represented in a frequency polygon. So um, I hope that this helps. If you still need information or you need more help, just let me know.